If you haven't done so, make sure you try the question on your own first before listening on. What we'll do is draw a free body diagram showing the forces acting on the conductor, which is this object right here. We can represent the conductor as just a point, and the first force that would be acting on it would be the downward gravitational force that we can label mg. Now, because this conductor is carrying current and is also placed in a magnetic field, it's going to be experiencing a magnetic force. And in order to be suspended in air, that magnetic force would have to be pointing upward to counter the downward gravitational force. So we can label the magnetic force Fb and show it directed upward. Now again, to be suspended, the magnitude of these two forces must be equal. So we can actually set the magnetic force magnitude equal to the gravitational force magnitude. Now we know that the magnetic force acting on a current carrying wire is equal to the magnetic field multiplied by the current, multiplied by the length of the conductor, and then multiplied by the sine of the angle between the current and the magnetic field. Now we don't yet know whether the current is flowing to the left or whether it's flowing to the right, but in either case, since the magnetic field is directed into the page, the angle between the current and the magnetic field is going to be 90 degrees. So that's the angle that we'll be plugging in for theta. And of course the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. So in essence this term can actually drop out of our equation leaving us with just B times I times L equal to mg. Part A is asking us to solve for the current and that would be I. So if we look at this equation we can solve it for I by dividing both sides of it by BL. The B's and L's will cancel out on the left hand side and that's going to leave us with an expression for the current equal to mg divided by B times L. Now one of the trickier things of this question was this notion of mass per unit length. Some of the questions include that but the book doesn't really explain that very well. If you look carefully at this equation you can see that we have a mass divided by a length right there. That quantity in its entirety, ma mass over length, is going to be what the question is calling mass per unit length and that has a value of 0 0.04. So in other words for the entire quantity m over l we can substitute in 0 0.04 and the unit there is kilograms over meters. The remaining part of the expression has g over b, the magnetic field. So of course g is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then the question gave us the magnetic field in the standard unit of Tesla. So we'll have 3.60 Tesla here. We can now simply pick up our calculators and work this out. And when we do so, we should get roughly 0 0.109, and the standard unit of current will be amps. So this is the correct answer to part A. Now on to part B. Let's recall that we said the magnetic force, which we labeled FB, was directed upward. We know the magnetic field is pointing into the page. And to figure out the direction of the current, we're going to be using a right-hand rule. Now I'm not much of an artist, but we'll make an attempt at it here. So this is a right hand, and what you're supposed to do is point your four fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. So you should be pointing your fingers into your computer screen right now, or your phone screen. And your palm is going to be facing in the direction of the magnetic force. So I've tried to show the palm facing upward. You'll notice, therefore, your thumb will naturally be pointing to the right. And it turns out that your thumb will show you the direction of the current. So that means that in this picture, the current will be indeed flowing to the right as opposed to the left. So the final answer for part B will be to the right.